I visited Kashiwa City, Chiba Prefecture, which is on the outskirts of Tokyo. This must be the factory where I can find today's Takumi or Innovator. And there's a chimney. I wonder what they're making. Follow me. Hello, I'm Michelle Yamamoto. Hello, I'm Takahashi. This is our Takumi or Innovator, Hiroshi Takahashi. What do you make here? Uh, we make glass. Like for window panes? No, we produce special purpose glass. The glass company was established in downtown Tokyo in 1928. They produce glass for car headlights and medical equipment. This piece is used at the dentist. How is your company's special technology being used in the Hadel Zone? Uh, we made this here. This glass sphere is capable of withstanding the water pressure at a depth of 8,000 meters. A depth of 8,000 meters? Yes, that's right. With glass? Amazing! A project launched by small independent factories in Tokyo was what got the Takumi involved in deep sea exploration. The group, which included small independent factories, universities, and so forth, combined their individual technologies to develop an unmanned deep-sea submersible that is able to film at a depth of 8,000 meters. The Takumi's company was called upon to create a container that would stay intact at a depth of 8,000 meters. I didn't know if our glass would be a match for the deep sea, but I saw it as a worthwhile challenge. The glass sphere is made by combining two half spheres. Takahashi paid particular attention to the bonding surface. At a depth of 8,000 meters, the sphere will encounter over 2,800 tons of pressure. If the force is not distributed evenly across the bonding surface, the glass sphere will implode and be smashed to pieces. This means there can be no interstices between the bonding surfaces. Until then, most submersibles used spheres made in either Germany or the US. But Takahashi found that the bonding surfaces of their glass spheres had problems. First, the US made sphere. It's rough. Try scratching it with your nails. It feels grainy. This one is smooth. Yes, it is. You can't tell just by touching the German-made sphere, but it's actually slanted. The Takumi's company was already capable of making a bonding surface without interstices. However, to reduce the irregularities to under a few microns, they needed an even higher level of skill. So Takahashi decided to ask another Takumi to process the glass. Katsuhisa Fujinuma is a master at polishing glass by hand. To even out the surface, Fujinuma's company uses this marble grinding table and a special paste. It's placed down like this and gently moved like this. Can you demonstrate? I would like to, but I'm afraid that's not possible. It's actually a company secret. Although we weren't able to film the process, we were shown a finished product. It's totally different. It's super smooth. The Takumi achieved a surface roughness of less than 2 microns. With the completion of a glass sphere that could handle a depth of 8,000 meters, the project moved swiftly forward. This was how the small-sized unmanned deep-sea submersible Edoku Ichigo was created. The communication equipment Lights and camera were loaded into the three glass spheres.
On November 2013, the Edo Koichigo tackled the Hato Zone. It succeeded in filming deep sea fish at a depth of 7,800 meters. The Takumi also told us that he wants to aim for an even deeper depth. We've developed a glass sphere that can handle a depth of 12,000 meters. We're pushing everyone to try for greater depths. We want to go along with them and see the deep sea world for ourselves. Michelle, I'm very impressed by how these small factories are able to build something as fantastic as a deep sea submersible. That's quite a feat. Yes, the small sized deep sea research submersible was developed by eight small factories and companies. Universities and credit unions also participated in the project. Original designs were used for many parts and they can be customized according to the need. Thank you very much for that report, Michelle. Now, the Hadel Zone is truly an endless source of wonder. Dr. Taida, I heard that plans are being made to develop a manned submersible that can go even deeper than the Shinkai 6500. Is this true? Yes, the concept has been dubbed the Shinkai 12000 because the submersible will be capable of reaching all sorts of the places. We call it a full depth submersible. Jamstex Yoshio Isozaki is overseeing the planning of the next generation submersible. This is the design that Isozaki has in mind for the manned research submersible that will be capable of diving to a depth of 12,000 meters. The plan is to create the passenger chamber out of a transparent material. Until now, you had to look out a viewport. You had to peer out, and that had its limitations. It was hard for the researchers to get a feel of their surroundings. I want to change that by making the entire passenger chamber transparent, which would give them a wide view. This will provide them with new inspiration and could possibly lead to new discoveries. Clear acrylic resin is already being used for research submersibles that dive to 1,000 meters and this has made it easier for scientists to study the organisms down there. However, the water pressure at a depth greater than 10,000 meters is similar to having a large jet plane on the palm of your hand. Until now, they weren't able to find a material that could handle this sort of pressure. Then the same material used for the small size deep sea submersible came to Isozaki's attention, glass. While its safety hasn't been verified yet, there's a high possibility that the pressure hull of the manned research submersible will be made out of glass. The tentative plan is to have the next generation submersible completed in about 10 years. Research and development are about to start in earnest. It will be impressive if they are able to make the passenger space out of transparent glass. Yes, with full vision of the observation capability of the Shinkai 12,000, I believe we may be able to find something extraordinary that goes beyond our current imagination. For example, we may be able to observe a 10-kilometer cross-section of exposed rocks that compose the surface of the Earth. And the water and gas seeping from the, those rocks at where various water depths might, be, might have produced unknown ecological systems. This would bring entirely new knowledge of the evolution of life, and yes, such expedition would be very, very exciting. Dr. Gathright, how would you wrap up today's program? It's often said that about 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Worlds under the sea have been a popular topic in novels and movies. Today, I was reminded of how the ocean is still a mysterious place with vast opportunities for discovery. I'd actually love to go down in the next generation Shinkai 12,000 submersible one day. You are invited. Thank you. Dr. Taira, thank you so much for joining us today. You are quite welcome. 
and thank you for watching. We hope to see you next time on Science View.